No federal database tracks the number of missing Native American Native American women in this country. Estimates range from 116 to as many as 5,000 women who have vanished without a trace. Today, we're shining a light on just one of those cases, the disappearance of Susan Robin Bender. That's today's True Crime Chronicles. It's April 25th, 1986. Susan Robin Bender, is waiting at the 10th and G Street Greyhound Bus Depot in Modesto, California. Susan plans to travel to Carmel-by-the-Sea, a small coastal town about 120 miles west of Modesto, to meet up with her friends for the day. But in moments, her life will change forever. We hung out a lot. We would bike ride, we would walk, we would do a lot of stuff together. Susan is at a payphone making a phone call. In her luggage, Susan has packed her diary, an address book, and some clothes. But instead of boarding a bus bound for Carmel, she is seen climbing into a full-size green van. The van drives off, and Susan Robin Bender vanishes. We had hope that she would be found alive in some way. Police begin searching for her, knowing that the next 24 hours are critical in missing persons cases. However, Susan's disappearance makes little to no national headlines. And the following day, on April 26th, the Soviet nuclear power plant at Chernobyl explodes. In the months that follow, this disaster dominates global attention as news agencies around the world obsess over the cleanup. But in Modesto, California, Susan's family finds no relief. Police track down a suspect, but they don't publicly identify him to the press, despite discovering Susan's diary, address book, and clothes at the suspect's house. And ultimately, authorities make no arrest nor file any charges. Susan is slowly forgotten, and her case goes cold. However, in October 2021, California's Modesto Police Department makes a surprising announcement. They reopen Susan's 35-year-old cold case and reignite hope that one day, Susan Robin Bender may finally find justice. I can't call it closure because I don't think you get closure. You just get some type of justice. Susan was just 15 years old when she disappeared. Today, she would have been in her 50s. Earlier, we caught up with Madison Wade, a reporter at ABC 10 in Sacramento, California. Here's what she had to tell us. Madison, thanks for taking the time to chat with us about Susan's disappearance. Why has Modesto PD reopened the case? So they have looked at cases throughout the history of their cold case unit to try to find ones that are solvable. And this is one that stood out to the Modesto Police Department. When we pressed them on exactly why they're reopening this case, they weren't able to give us much more details, probably for a good reason. And we don't want to jeopardize what, what that might be. But they did tell us that they identified some potential areas of opportunity which may lead them to a possible suspect and moving this case forward. This includes advanced advancements in technology, probably genetic genealogy as well. And they also were saying that they, they could have more information about some individuals that were previously unidentified that could be part of Susan's disappearance that they haven't spoken to yet. So again, putting this out into the media, into the local news always helps, brings in a lot of tips. I know from my series, Unsolved California, anytime we do a story on any case, every single de department, police agency gets uh, hundreds of tips um, from people. So we do know that that is a tool our local police Police departments like to use. There are so few details about Susan's disappearance. Why do you think her case has gotten so little attention? It's a great question and one we actually asked Modesto police as well. And again, it's been 36 years now, so it's hard to say exactly why there wasn't so much media attention at the very beginning when this happened. It could be her age. She was 15 years old. As we know now in the news media, when we hear of a 15 year old uh, missing, it's well, were they at risk? Are they running away from something? Was this their, their own decision? So that could be playing into it. It also um, could be her background, you know, the, the, um, 
In fact, she was a Native American descent as well. Um, we do know white woman missing white woman syndrome is a real thing. We just saw that with the Gabby Petito case, and that is still ongoing. Uh, we all sh actually talked to a criminologist, Zach Summers, who published a study about the missing white woman syndrome. And he said and found that and white girls and women make up a third of America's population, and they were the subject about of half of the news stories that they examined. During their initial investigation, the police found found Susan's belongings at the home of the suspect, but no arrest was ever made. I find that problematic. Can you tell me why? Absolutely, and I, I wish I had a very clear answer as to why, but what we do know is that her diary, her address book, some other items, personal items, she had a bracelet on at the time that she was that she was, uh, you know, taken, um, a gold bracelet. So some other items, we don't exactly know, some clothing were also located at the suspect's home um, after she vanished. Now, this person has been cleared. They were never arrested as part of this investigation because of a lack of evidence. Again, 36 years ago, that is a long time ago when DNA evidence wasn't uh, that pertinent. Of course, now we know DNA evidence is the key to solving so many of these cases. So it is quite possible that that person they were looking at initially when they found some of her items, uh, they're looking at again. And we just don't know. We don't want to jeopardize the case. You know, Modesto Police is reopening this case for a very good reason. And that is possibly one of the biggest reasons. Well, I mean, we certainly appreciate your efforts in this case. I know that we are blasting this everywhere because we want people to jog their memories. We want people to come forward if they have any information. Uh, Madison, thank you so much for chatting with us and for all the work that you're doing. Thank you. Absolutely. Happy to help. Since reopening her case, Modesto PD has reported no new developments. Anyone with information about Susan can call the Modesto police at 209-342-9104. But for now, it seems Susan's disappearance will remain unsolved.